Dr. Trutluhithi, outside the church, as you might have gathered, um, because I've been tipped off by our butcher about um, a discarded kitchen cabinet um, down the side of the church. It's been abandoned, and uh, he wasn't pulling me like. Here it is. I'm examining it now for defects. Hmm. Is somebody getting married? You might be wondering. No, not to my knowledge. That's Ken Worthington, practising his latest hobby, bell ringing. Oof, went a bit wrong there, didn't it? Well, somebody did. Oof. We present The Shuttleworths, episode one, Chic Ken. Ken was introduced to the society by a widow called Audrey, who offered Ken the hand of friendship, and he's reciproc... Uh, ooh! They've stopped. What's gone wrong? Oh, probably just taking a little break. But, uh, hey, that's Ken's bell, I think, and possibly Audrey's. <laughs> it's amazing, you know, it's his first evening there, but already he's been selected to do a duet. Um, but doesn't surprise me, because everything Ken touches at the moment turns to gold. Uh, business is booming. Uh, he had his drive asphalted last week. Uh, he booked himself on a coach trip to Castle Howard, uh, purely on spec, and sat next to a divorcee called Gillian, who works part-time as a receptionist for a skip hire company in Mexborough. Next week, Ken is taking her to a tapas bar in the city centre. <laughs> you know... If I wasn't a happily married man, I might be quite envious. Right, I've got to put this cupboard in me uh, Austin Ambassador. See you later. These dolly pegs are a bit stiff. Used to uh, be supplied by a gypsy lady, but uh, she stopped coming round in the early 70s. Disillusioned, I suspect, by the growing competition from uh, major supermarket chains. But uh, I wish she'd come back, because her pegs were definitely superior. <gasps> Somebody's just appeared, <coughs> excuse me, on their patio. And it's none other than uh, Ken Worthington, looking remarkably fresh after last night's exertions. And uh, he's... Oh, he's got a tray with him, upon which sits uh, a pot of coffee. Morning, Ken. Mm. <coughs> Morning. It's a cafetiere. Cafetiere, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Uh, you do know to press the plunger down, don't you? Oh, yeah, yes. Yeah, of course he does. Yes. Uh, somebody like Ken would know that, but some people don't. They think it's to keep the coffee warm. But it's a mistake they only make once. <laughs> um, Ken's uh, placed the tray on his patio table oh. and he's... Sitting down to enjoy an executive style breakfast before commencing work at his desk where he oversees the careers of several up and coming uh, artists in the area, including myself, of course, John Shuttleworth, a versatile singer songwriter. Oh, that reminds me, Ken, uh, I've got a tape for you with some new songs on. Oh, yes. Well, just pop it in the post, John, uh, clearly labelling the sender's name and address. And now, Get in contact in due course. Right. Yes, I will. Thank you. Wash day, is it, John? Uh, it is, Ken, yes. And once I've hung this lot out, I've got to go and uh, make the beds and uh, hoover around. Oh, Mary's still incapacitated, then? Uh, she is, I'm afraid, yes. So, of course, you won't know, ladies and gentlemen, but um, Mary sprained her ankle at step class because uh, they're putting up bush city limits on, oh. which is far too fast for mature ladies. Mm. Mary twisted her ankle, so she got her feet up. I'm doing all the chores. Mm. And, uh, you know, I've been up since seven. Quite tired, actually. Jan! <gasps> Jan! Oh, I think you're required indoors, John. Hurry up! Oh, I've left a egg in the pan. Seven minutes. Oh. It's going to be well done. It is. Before I go, Ken, uh, I've noticed your orange juice. Mm. It's got little bits floating in it. I think it's meant to have, John. Yeah, but it's not worth the risk, Ken, surely. I'll take it back to the shop if I were you. Jan! Oh, come in, love. Mm.
just take your couple of... Hey! Sorry, I thought you'd finished. Well, I haven't. Would you like more toast, Mary? Er, uh, no, thank you. I think right. that's sufficient. Yeah, all right. I'll get your foot spa working in a minute, love. Mm, lovely. Just do the washing up first. Right. <sighs> Mary, Mary When I met you I was wary You looked just like a fairy But I could see that you were contrary Mary, Mary Mary, Mary Mary, Mary Whoa, whoa, oh, oh Mary, Mary Once I'd made Mary comfortable and done all the housework, I ventured to Natto's to do the weekly shopping. This is something Mary and I normally do together. I hold the bag steady while Mary transfers the goods into the bags. So on my own, I was struggling. I know she had a spot in the next aisle, but Ken Worthington, the little basket full of bachelor items, he sorted through. Yet still managed to find time to enjoy banter with the cashier and pat a little lad on the head. And then walking home past the St John's ambulance rooms, who should have spot but Ken doing line dancing? I could only see the top of his head because it was quite high windows. But he was surrounded by ladies, all in perfect formation. They'd have had his special boots on with flashing lights and I'd have loved to have joined him. But I had to get back home. Mary, Mary, when I met you I was wary You said my arms were hairy, now that was unnecessary Mary, Mary, cos they weren't very hairy really Mary, 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 oh, 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 Mary, Mary Jan, let me come myself uh, Yeah, come in love Normally, I enjoy mowing the lawn, but it's not very pleasant today because I have to uh, keep stupid to get under the washing. Oh. oh, Ken's mowing his lawn as well. Well, he's attempting to, can't get it going. It's not Ken. He's on his patio with his feet up, enjoying what looks like uh, a bottle of Bavarian lager. Who is it then? That must be Joyce. Uh, she's a, a lady that can met through the Lonely Hearts. Widow, 59, very, very lonely. Uh, two fairies, you know, which I thought was a bit ominous. Uh, likes gardening, but doesn't have a garden. Now, Ken, of course, has a garden, but he hates gardening. Open the choke, Joyce! Oh, don't mind giving instructions, though. It's that lever there. You're doing fine, love. Oh, yeah, she's sweating profusely. But she can't complain, really, because she did say in the advert... That she likes gardening. You've flooded it, love. Do some weeding for a while. Oh. Jan, can you uh, come and change my video, please? Uh, yes, I can, love. Yeah. Hmm. You're doing a grand job there, Jan. Thanks, Ken. Cheers, Joyce. Oh. Sometimes when you feel you can sink no lower, then you're right. You know, you can't sink any lower. And the only way you can go is up. And that's what happened suddenly. Uh, Mary's ankle got better. She went to the shops and bought me a body warmer, which I tried on, and yes, it looked very good on me, and Mary thought so too, and uh, I stood in the mirror with Mary, uh, she had a tracksuit on, and we just looked at our reflections, and we looked good together, you know, there's no doubt about it, that seemed to bring us closer, and uh, that night I played me organ in the lounge, while Mary read a magazine, it was lovely. Ironically, as my star was rising, Ken seemed to be on the way. On a trip to the local library to return Mary's books, I met him coming down the steps, looking as white as a sheet. What's the matter, Ken? I've lost it, John. Lost what? I was trying to chat up um, a lady called Olive. Yes. And she just kept saying, shush, be quiet. Well, that's fair enough, Ken, when you're in a library. No, it's not as simple as that, John. I wish it was. I've lost it. I've lost my golden touch. I, on the other hand, could do no wrong. 
I arrived home to find a parcel containing a pair of jeans that Mary had ordered for me from a catalogue. The stretch fit, you know. I put them on and spent the afternoon on the patio uh, modifying that cupboard I found round the side of the chair. Oh. Mm. It's coming on nicely, John. Do you like it, love? Well, oh, very nice. Oh. Give us a cuddle. Come on. Oh. Mm. <laughs> Mary. <laughs> mm. oh. Incredibly, Mary agreed that the new cupboard should be housed under the stairs as a storage space for uh, dusters, polish, cleaning agents, cleaning fluids, that sort of thing. And in celebration of this, I popped out to buy a takeaway pizza. I had my body warmer on, my jeans, of course. I'd borrowed my daughter Karen's baseball cap and I blended in very nicely with the lasses who served me. And on the way home, I called him to see my son Darren at Victoria Wine. And he popped a couple of light tails in my bag. I couldn't put a foot wrong, you know. And as I passed by the church that evening, it seemed like the bell ringing society were playing just for me. <laughs> Ooh. Hey, maybe there's going to be a duet again with uh, Karen Audrey. No, he's been singled out to play a solo. Blimey. But what a week ago would have been a solo. Now had the unmistakable air of a funeral knell. Ken's funeral. Minutes later, he appeared on the church steps, coughing and wheezing, a crushed, pathetic figure. They've sacked me, John. They've sacked me. No. I couldn't pull the rope hard enough. Oh, dear. Audrey's not talking to me. She found out about Jillian, you see. Oh, yeah. Can we go for a drink, John? Well, I'd love to, but uh, I'm on my way home with my pizza. Oh. Yes, uh, me and Mary are going to be eating this whilst we watch a video. I see. And uh, in the morning, I'm taking her to a heavy horse centre, followed by an early lunch at uh, Carvery, which has just opened up um, in the Ashby de la Zouch area. Oh. Mm. Things are looking up for you, John. You dress very smartly. Oh, Seem thank to have you. a very full social calendar. Well, you and me both can. Mm. In fact, isn't it tonight you're taking Gillian to a Cantonese restaurant in Bawtry? No, we're not going now. Oh, why not? Because I was very rude about her house. Ooh. She's had um, new facias and guttering done. Ooh. I was highly critical of it. Ooh. Now she won't take me calls. Um, well, no doubt uh, Joyce is waiting at home for you. Oh, I hope not. What do you mean? She came at me with the secretaries. No. When I asked her to create out my fence. Oh. Can you fool? In fact, can I come back with you, John? Ooh. Just in case she is there. Well, please. And have some of your pizza. Hey. Watch the video. No. And in the morning, um, uh, I'll come to the heavy horse centre with you and Mary. I'm sure you will. Is that possible? No. Go on. Not really, can I'll have an early night tonight and listen to your tape. What? You mean you haven't heard it yet? Oh, give us a chance. It only arrived this morning. Oh, I see. Mm. Right, that's but... settled then. Oh, he's got some beers. Hey. Can I have one, John? No. Please, I'm parched. Can. It's thirsty work, bell ringing, you know. Hey. Cheers, John. Oh, he's uh, tried to open one of my light tails in the mouth of uh, a gargoyle. Oh. Mind the ancient stonework, Ken. The Shuttleworths was written and performed by Graham Fellows, with additional material by Martin Willis and Will Yap. The producer was Paul Schlesinger. Thank you.